I think for several months now, the presumptive number one wide receiver in the 2017 NFL draft has been Mike Williams from Clemson. Here's a guy that had a big year in 2014, then come 2015, injures his neck, serious neck injury at the beginning of the year, misses the rest of the year, ends up redshirting, and then comes back in 2016 with Deshaun Watson at the helm and puts up some very nice numbers, has a big year, and is part of the national championship Clemson Tigers team. And, you know, Mike Williams is the type of guy that stands out to you because of certain things that he does, because of certain plays he can make. And you sit there and you say, wow, at times. And you say, this guy looks the part. This guy can be a number one franchise type of wide receiver, a game breaker, a game changer. And I can see if he only saw the highlights, if he only saw the clips, if he only bothered to watch bits and pieces, and you didn't allow the entire story to play out, if he didn't bother to do the work to paint the entire picture, I can see where people think that. But to me, the truth of the matter is, is while I see the potential, I see the upside, I think this is far from a surefire number one wide receiver, and this is a guy with some serious work to do to be able to reach that potential at the NFL level. And he is not, in my opinion, the number one wide receiver in this draft class, nor is he even the number two wide receiver in this draft class. Boom, I said it. But why do I think that way? Well, let's take a look at his attributes, his positives, and the negatives. I'm going to start with the strengths. you got to look at his size. This is a guy, what, about 6'3 half, maybe 215 pounds or so. He's got close to that prototype size of what you would like to have ideally out of a number one wide receiver. A big guy, long arms, a decent speed and quickness. I wouldn't say he's an explosive athlete by any means. He shows an occasional flash of having some explosion, uh, especially the further he gets down the field. I think he's faster than he is quick. Um, I'd like to see him get a little quicker, but sometimes I think it's important to understand that. When we talk about quickness, we act like whatever they are at college, they can't get any more at the NFL level. And that's just ridiculous. That's just not true. We're talking in a lot of these cases about 21, 22, 23-year-old young men who, from a physical standpoint, haven't even reached their peak as men, which usually happens in the 28 to 33 age range. So these are guys that still can work at it. They can do plyometrics. They can do other speed training. They can do weight training. They can work on their explosiveness. They can get quicker and they can get faster. I see the fundamentals in place where Mike Williams has enough of it. He could stand to use more of it, but for his size, he has a pretty good amount of quickness and speed. I also look at him and his catch radius. I think he has an outstanding catch radius, the ability to high point the ball, to get the ball behind his body, the ball thrown way out in front of him, to adjust the ball to go get it low. I, I like that about him as well. I like the intangibles of a kid who comes back from a serious neck injury and is a part of a national championship team. I like a guy who I've seen some progression and growth in as a wide receiver. And while he still has a ways to go, he, there's still something to be impressed by. And I also like his run after the catch ability. For a big dude, he does have some wiggles, some make you miss in the open field. If you get him the ball in his hands on the move, he could be very dangerous because he does have some lateral agility. He does have some make you miss, and he runs with an anger and a purpose as a ball carrier, he'll not be afraid to lower his shoulder. He'll be the guy that could fight through some arm tackles of smaller defensive backs. He's a guy that will pick up extra yards that way. A third and six, you throw him a four-yard pattern, he can maybe pick up three yards to get the first down. You know, those are some of the things that really leap out to me. Is a guy with an outstanding catch radius with close to ideal sight, enough quickness and speed to get by, and if he improves any more, could be even more dangerous at the NFL level. Um, and looking at a guy that's really, really good with the ball in his hands after the catch. And I'll even talk about his ability to separate. I think for, for a guy like him, sometimes it's tricky when we talk about separation at the college level because it's sometimes about the, the routes that they run. It's about the system that they're in, the way that they're utilized. It's about the way uh, teams tend to always play their corners 8 to 10 yards off if the outside wide receiver has any speed factor whatsoever, which Mike Williams does. Uh, so it can be hard to judge some of those things. But I think he gets decent separation, by no means the best in this draft class, but it's not his biggest weakness. Like when I initially started evaluating Mike Williams and I was watching and I was watching, I, I, th I thought initially 
one of the big knocks I was going to have on him was separation, and that didn't necessarily true, prove out to be the case. I think in part sometimes when it comes to separation, you could be a little too much focus on it for bigger wide receivers because you can throw them the ball when they're covered and still feel good about the ability to complete the pass. And with his ability to high point, his ability to go get the ball, you know, you, you feel confident that even when he appears to be covered, he could still, in theory, be open. Um, and when I look at him, though, you know, those are good traits to have. They are positive traits. But I just don't see, right now anyways, and that's the key word, right now anyways, this game-breaking wide receiver, this top five or ten talent that many people have been talking about. I just don't. Like I mentioned before, he has decent quicks, but he doesn't have exceptional quicks. He's a little bit of a long strider, can take a little bit to get going. His top end speed is good, but he's not a true burner in the sense that he's just going to blow by people. Um, what concerns me about that is his route running is less than ideal. He's got a limited route tree, uh, primarily played outside at Clemson, and I think that's where he primarily has to play at the NFL level. A lot of what he does is very straight line. Uh, he could be a little more explosive in and out of his breaks. There's not a lot of double movement there, honestly. Uh, some of the breaks that he does have, he could take a little bit to set up. He could kind of tip off where he's going or tip off potentially what he's going to do. He's going to have to sharpen up that route running, especially with that less than ideal quickness. Because even as a bigger receiver, you know there are some bigger corners in the league. If he's not explosive enough or he's not precise enough in his route running, these corners are going to be able to stay on him and they're going to be draped on him in that, even in that 5 to 10 yard range. And you could talk about he's got an okay ability to separate, but there's sometimes I watch and I did wonder if it was a product of the system and the fact that defensive backs played so far off. You know, Will he be able to separate quite the same at the NFL level? I'm not really sure. Uh, what really worries me about him on top of the route running and the lack of elite quicks is his hands. And too many drops for a big-time wide receiver. He has a bad habit at times of letting the ball get into his body instead of meeting the ball with his hands. I mean, he can make some great and spectacular catches. And this is where I talked about before the whole thing of if you just caught clips, or you just caught highlights, or you just caught some of the buzzy plays that he does, you'd be like, wow, this guy looks like God at the wide receiver position. But when you watch the entirety of of the truth. You'll see a guy that can make some great spectacular catches, but has a lot of balls bounce off of his chest and bounce off of his hands. He has got to be better at holding the ball in. And I don't think sometimes it's a concentration issue. I just think that sometimes it's a, te a technique and a lack of natural feel as a pe pass catcher issue. He's got to work on this. He's got to hit the jugs machine. He's got to work with the quarterbacks in camp. He has got to get better at this because no matter how much he might be able to get open, no matter how many big plays he could potentially make, if he can't make the solid, unspectacular catch, you know, the 10-yard catch on third and eight that moves the sticks, then how much good is he really going to be for an NFL team? And all he's ultimately going to be is one of those cock teases that you think does so much more than what he actually does. And for me, out of a number one wide receiver, I like to see a guy catch most of those passes, most of the easy ones. You know, and, and he, he doesn't. He he makes the spectacular catches and too many drops on some of the basic crap, frankly. I also have some concerns about the neck injury he suffered in 2015. His combine medicals are going to be very important. You know, is that going to be a potential concern long term down the road? Is he going to run into other neck issues? Uh, could it potentially lead to an early end to his NFL career? Is it not going to be an issue? Is it going to be just fine? He's had some other concussions. I worry sometimes about the way he does run after the catch with the neck injury, with the concussions if this is going to be a guy that's prone to some head and neck injuries at the NFL level, and that's where it starts to get scary, even for the player, to where they might potentially want to call it a career early. So I look at Mike Williams, and I see the talent. I see the upside. I see the potential. And if a team ultimately takes him in the top 20 picks, top 25 picks, I won't really knock him, especially if I see the systemic fit. Um, I think the opportunity is good because it makes sense. Because some teams are going to look at that size, look at the quickness and speed for that size, his tremendous catch radius, they're going to look at his run after the catch ability, and they're going to fall in love with it and view a guy like him as a potential number one wide receiver, which I still do. I still think he has number one wide receiver potential. But I think this could potentially also be a guy in Mike Williams that early on might have to get by on some physical talents, and he's going to have to do that at the NFL level 
where a lot of other guys have equivalent physical talents to him. There's not a lot of polish to his game. He needs quite a bit of work. And for me, you spend a top 10 pick on a guy like this, if he had elite explosiveness and elite speed, better hands, then I wouldn't worry as much about the route running and the separation because I'm like, that's what we're here to do is coach him up. We'll get him better at that. But with that, combined with the neck injury, you know, I ultimately look at him and I view him as an 87. I think he's a mid-second round talent. I'm sorry, I do. NFL comparison for him is probably Alshon Jeffrey. Um, I think he's just a little bit more explosive than Alshon. Uh, but some of the concerns about the limited route tree, um, not being very precise in and out of breaks. You know, like I heard last year during one of the games, uh, one of the analysts was talking about the Alshon Jeffrey who isn't really a route runner. And, that, and that's really true. He will make some spectacular catches, and he will have some monster games. But he will have huge stretches of time where he really disappoints, and he flat out disappears. And you look at Mike Williams, and you talk about the national championship game against Alabama. He had a long stretch where he was really struggling, and he didn't really play well. He contributed a little bit more towards the end of the game, but against elite competition, he kind of shriveled up there for a little bit, and that's concerning too. And it was so reminiscent to be, you know, six foot three, bigger physical type of guy, uh, better running after the catch than probably given credit for. Tremendous catch radius, ability to go get the ball at its highest point, can be very physical. Um, could be tough for uh, especially smaller corners to out-physical him. But sometimes if you don't work him into the game plan early, if you don't get him involved early, he just kind of goes through the motions and he just disappears for too long of a stretch of time to ever be classified as a number one wide receiver. And that's what I'm concerned that Mike Williams is going to be. That guy that the people that don't pay attention think is a number one wide receiver – and those that are maybe fans of the team that he plays on and other people that actually pay attention realize that he's not quite a number one wide receiver, but he should be, and at some point in time in his NFL career probably gets paid like one. At this moment in time, based off of the players that I've graded at the wide receiver position, Mike Williams is my number three wide receiver on the board, and like I said, a solid mid-second round pick. But if a team takes him again in the top 20, 25 picks, and I think the situation is right, the fit is right, I will not knock him for it. It won't be what I classify as a massive reach or anything like that because I can see, again, where the prioritization on certain traits or characteristics might place him higher on certain teams' draft boards than others and most certainly places him higher on their draft boards than it does mine. I think he's a good talent. You know, There are some special traits there, but he's a long way from being polished and, frankly, to me, quite a ways away from being the number one wide receiver prospect in this 2017 NFL draft.